Hello, everybody. So today I want to do a three-part series on SLA printing. And in the first part, we are going to analyze a part for printing. And then in part two, I'm going to do another run at my 3D coat Boolean and smoothing tutorial. It's been a few years since I did the last one. And I've got a lot of tips and tricks. And uh, we'll show it with the new version 4.5. And then finally, we will actually support the model and send it to printing in the last video. So I'm going to start off with a print that was uh, somebody had that failed. And they oriented it to the uh, table at about a five degree angle off the table. And let's just use draft angle analysis to take a look at this model to start with. What draft angle analysis does is show you the angle relative to the build table. So anything in red is going to be a problem area. Anything in blue will be fine, and green is somewhat in the middle. You need to look at it. It may be fine. It may be not. Uh, but we'll look at that in just a second. But as you can see, the way this part was oriented, that's a lot of red. And everything red definitely needs a, a good support. So when I'm trying to think of which way I want to orient this. Standing straight up is probably your best bet. Some people like to put it on a little bit of a incline, uh, but I, I would think that standing straight up would give you your cleanest uh, print. You've got some red here in the bottom going into green and blue, and you've got some here at the top. Now green might be a problem, and I'll get to that in just a second, but the first thing we need is to have this securely attached to our build table. And since all these parts are going to be investment cast, a giant sprue right here will satisfy that, uh, that prerequisite. And it will probably go all the way out here to the green, and we won't have to worry about it either. That just leaves this part up here at the top. Now, the way I analyze these green areas is with a clipping plane and a regular plane. And if you look real close, you can see that they're just offset. That offset is 25 microns. As I drag this through my model, it's showing me one slice. And I can look underneath and see what's underneath that slice. I'm going to turn off the clipping plane because I don't want to see it and just leave the plane on. And we can go through that green area, which was right about here, and take a look at it. I also have... Uh, the clipping plane and the plane grouped together so that when I use a 25 micron increment here, I can go up, enter, up, enter, and it's showing me the overhang, uh, the amount of material that's being added but not supported directly on the underside. It's going to show me the amount of overhang right here. And it's a fairly small amount of overhang, but it's also backed up by this back plane. So it's supported on two sides, this long sliver. That should be enough. Looking at it from the bottom, that's a different story. That, that's about the green area on the bottom. And as I go through here, it's the same amount of overhang, but if I look at it on the underneath side, there's not a lot of mass behind it that's going to physically support it. Now, when the printer prints this 25 micron layer, it is extra soft. This layer actually gets cured as the next four layers after it get printed. So this is the very first cure. It's very thin, 25 microns. And the way the printer works is the build table goes down to the VAT window, goes up, goes down to the VAT window, goes up. And the resin is fairly thick. So as it's being pushed down through this thick liquid, that's going to get bent back. It's not going to be flush with the uh, the bat window. And you're going to get some, what it'll look like, the layers will peeled back or it will be a bumpy surface. That's all because that was too thin and there was no mass behind it as it was pushed down to the bat window. So we definitely want to support there. But at the top, we're lucky enough that we have that back plane Oops. We're lucky enough to have that back plane. 
that's supporting it. And as we get towards the red, which was in here, we can step through this as well. Just scroll up, enter, scroll up, enter. Those are some fairly big jumps, which the red will always be bigger jumps than the green. But I think that back plane and the sides is going to give it enough support that I wouldn't worry about adding a support here. If you wanted to add a support, then right here on the outside wall would probably, no, because it's got all this behind it. I would say do nothing. Um, if you really wanted to do it, you would have to do it underneath here somewhere, and then that just makes it difficult to clean up. I think you'll be fine without it. So that model just had an orientation problem. Let's look at our next model. This model was sent to me by another CAD designer and he was having difficulty uh, printing it with an SLA printer. Let's scroll down here to the bottom and take a look at it. So right about here. Now this sprue might be fine for injection wax molding, but I don't like this right here. That's not a lot of mass behind it. And as it's traveling up through the, uh, let's go over here to box edit. As we travel up through that red and yellow to green zone, you can see those jumps are not too lengthy, but there's just no mass behind it to support it. So those are going to peel back and be a problem. What I like to use is something called a Justin support. So this is from somebody on the B9 forum came up with this. And this is my version of it. It's a little T-splines model. Uh, it can quickly grab the points and, and bend them into shape to match the uh, ring size and thickness. We'll cover that more when we get to the final video. So I'm not going to worry about that for now. Let's just go through this model and see what else is an issue. No problems so far. Oh, there's a floater right there. So it's not touching either side. Now, if I'm using my B9 printer, uh, the software will look and see that this is completely unsupported. There's nothing underneath it. And it just skip printing these voxels on that slice. If you're not using a B9, there's a good chance that this will get printed. It'll get stuck to your VAT window. And then uh, the layers that come after it, these guys right here, will all be failures because this is stuck to the VAT window and not letting light pass through uh, to the part hanging from the build table. So this is an easy fix in 3D coat. I just need to have a mental note that this needs to be addressed. And we can keep going up. And here's our next area that I'm worried about. So let me go down one slice. Oops. And we can zoom in here and see what one slice difference makes. Okay. Now that's a good amount of a gap that's being bridged. And if we look on the underside, there's not a lot of mass behind it to support it. Okay, this whole thing, there, there's no support on it. So what that's going to do is bend and droop, and we're going to have a very muddy surface on the bottom of this. We're probably going to have some layers peeled back. So I need to have a mental note here that that will probably print okay. But once we get to here, it's not it's going to stop printing okay. So I need to have a support there and there underneath those prongs. And let's see. Okay, I'm going to have a support on that prong and that prong. Let's look at our next layer, next layer, next layer. I probably want to have a support right there on the center prong as well. So three supports, one, two, and three. Need to keep a mental note of that. As we keep going up here. Okay. 
There, this is our next problem area. Okay, so all of a sudden we go from this to this. And if we look at the amount of material supporting it, these prongs are thin and at an angle. And so just imagine pushing down on this, they're going to give some. Okay, it's, it's not going to have the rigidity to bounce back. So we will probably need a support right about there on the prong. The other issue is the amount of mass uh, that's, that's right there. Oh, and I just saw another one. Look at the way the shank attaches here. Wouldn't it be better if that shank came off and slowly curved into the head? We'll address that in 3D Coat, and we'll address the amount of mass that's being added here in this single layer in 3D Coat as well. Now, there's not a problem from a wearability standpoint with this halo. It's thick. It's attached to a shank. It's going to wear fine. These prongs are just too thin to, to support that plate during printing. Okay, let's keep going through. No more floaters. No more problem areas. Okay, so we've analyzed our part. We know we need a better sprue. We're, we know we're going to need supports here, here, and here on both sides. We also are going to need to support these prongs in right when they make that turn there, there, and there. And we also need to eliminate uh, some of the mass that shows up suddenly on that one layer. We'll also fix this while we're in there as well. Okay, see you in the next video.